Hello and welcome to this Factory Design Suite 2014 What's New presentation. My name is Rusty Belcher and I'll be going over the new features of the Factory Design Suite 2014 release with you today. The first thing I want to focus on in our What's New presentation is a new member of the Factory Design Suite and that's Autodesk Recap. We utilize Autodesk Recap to actually manipulate point clouds prior to bringing them into the Inventor environment. I'm going to start off our presentation by bringing in a number of point cloud scans and we're going to place all of these scans together into one large scan. I'll go ahead and select next and you can see how fast these scans actually populate inside of Autodesk Recap. It's important if you're new to point clouds that you understand how large point clouds are. All of the scans you see here on the screen together are about six gigs of data and it comes into the Recap application very, very quickly and very easily. I'm going to spin the point cloud around, and this is the facility that we're going to be working on today. Uh, our goal, as far as this presentation is concerned, is to actually work on a CNC area that's in the back of this facility. I'm going to use the flight navigation tool and actually walk through the point cloud now Recap allows us to actually manipulate point clouds and in previous releases of Inventor we could use point clouds but basically we had to use them as is and Recap allows us to establish layers and colors and we can perform measurements uh, inside of this particular environment and we can also sequester part of the point cloud and actually kind of whittle it down to a manageable size so that we can use it in our Inventor projects. So this is the area that we're going to be working on. This is a CNC uh, workshop. We have a number of new machines that we need to populate in this area. We're going to take the old machines out and put some new machines in. So the next thing I want to do, I'm actually going to start another new scan or a new project. And I'm just going to pick one corner of this facility and bring it in by itself. And this is the corner that has the CNC shop in it right here. Now, as I said before, our goal here is to actually remove the, the machines off the floor and, and I don't need the floor as well. Factory Design Suite gives me a fantastic floor to drop my assets on and uh, having points in that plane would just be a, a waste of space inside of the file. So the first thing I want to do is actually change the bounding box of the point cloud that you see here. So let me zoom out a little bit and I'm simply going to drag the top of this bounding box down and I'm going to reveal those machines that are on the inside of the point cloud. We'll go ahead and confirm that and we have much easier access to the floor area now. I'm also going to change my view under the display I can turn off perspective view and I think the first thing we'll do here is actually try to get rid of all the points that are in the floor plane. We have a number of selection techniques for picking points and one of them is planar. All you have to do is click at least three points to define a plane and in this case I'm going to pick five or six points and I simply hit the enter button and every point that's within a certain value of being in that plane is selected and I can simply hit the delete key on the keyboard or the delete key uh, down below in the interface. Now I want to use a window selection for my next pick and we're just going to try to pick most of the points that are going to represent the machines here. So I'm going to make a, a big window selection here. We'll try to pick all of those points at one time and then we'll delete those as well. Now I have a couple of support columns here that I want to uh, preserve. So I'm going to make a few extra tweaks or a few extra picks right here to get rid of those points. There we go. And if I go back to my isometric view, we can spin it around and we can see we have a much cleaner uh, work space, uh, work point cloud that we can use inside of Inventor uh, when we're placing our assets in context of the point cloud. So I've opened up my Inventor application and I want to begin the process of creating my layout. 
So I'll start a new layout and I want to add my DWG overlay. Now as I do, I want you to notice a couple of new commands that we have available inside of the Factory Design Suite 2014. Of course I can add a DWG overlay like we have in the past, but I can also add a DWG overlay from Vault. There are a number of Vault-centric commands that have been added to the 2014 release. Anytime we're bringing in a component for various reasons, there typically is now a Vault-centric workflow for that. If I go to Create Asset, you'll see that I can import DWG solids from the Vault, or I can import models from the Vault to create assets. And if I'm inserting a model, I can insert an existing model directly from the Vault. Now I'm going to go ahead and add my DWG overlay. We'll go ahead and add our drawing here and place those lines onto the factory floor. And the next thing I want to do is add the point cloud that we just created into our Inventor environment. On the Manage tab, I'll come in here and you can see where Autodesk Recap is actually integrated into the Inventor application. In this case though, I'm just going to import the cleaned up point cloud into our environment. Now I'm going to set up our top view and I'm going to zoom up in here and place our point cloud. Right there. And I'm going to change the offset on the z-axis just to zero, just to put it at the correct height. So now if we just take a second and spin this around, we'll go ahead and put it into perspective view and you can actually see how nice it is to actually be able to place my assets and check them immediately in context of the existing facility. And notice that it's just the point clouds that I want. Uh, I was able to manipulate the point cloud with Autodesk Recap and bring in just the points I need uh, for this particular project. Now as I move on, I'm going to take the visibility of the point cloud off and put us back into the orthographic view. Now I'd like to share with you one of my favorite new features for the Factory Design Suite 2014, and that's the addition of the Palettes command on the Factory ribbon. The Palettes command gives me very easy access to activate my Asset Browser and my Factory Properties window. I can also activate my Factory Asset Preview window if I need it. Now I'm going to add a few of our new CNC assets to our floor plan. And I'm actually going to use some of the new test drive assets that are available for this demonstration. Another new feature you're going to find in the Factory Design Suite 2014 is that the reposition command is automatically activated when you place an asset. The reposition command gives us greater flexibility when we're placing our initial assets. In previous releases, we could easily rotate the component into position, but with the reposition command, I can change the elevation or the overall orientation of the asset relative to the factory floor. Now for our demonstration today, I have two of these TD Haas VF4 assets to add to our new space. So I'm going to place the first one in here. We'll just track off of this one about 60 inches and put that into position. And then for the second one, let's go ahead and place this in position as well. Now for our demonstration today, I want you to remember that these two assets are exactly the same asset. And we'll talk about the differences or the unique identifiers for those assets a little bit later in the presentation. I have one more asset to bring in. And again, we'll use the reposition command to easily place that in the space. Now, the next new feature I really want to focus on is the layer capability for factory layouts. But before I do that, I need to add some more assets to our design. So I'm going to go up to the asset browser and I'm going to type in a search for tool. I want to bring in a couple of toolboxes. And I'm just going to drag these in fairly quickly here. We're going to place one of them over here beside this machine. And then I'll quickly just add a copy. We'll place that here. And we'll add another copy right here. I also want to add a workbench. 
we'll add that here. And a couple of cranes. Another enhancement for the factory design suite 2014 is the addition of so many more assets that we have available in the asset browser. I'm just going to add a gantry crane here and a jib crane. And I'll finish this up with some material handling equipment. I think we'll use a forklift. and a couple of pallets. So now that I have the extra assets in place, I want to take a look at the new layer functionality that's available with the Factory Design Suite 2014. A number of our users, one of their main requests to Autodesk was this ability to actually include layers during my layout process. We've, we use layers inside of the AutoCAD environment all the time, and it's nice to have them now inside the Inventor environment. And they work very, very similar to their AutoCAD counterparts. For instance, I can activate the Layer Manager and I can click the New Layer command. And I'm just going to create a layer called CNC, I'll hit Enter, and I'll set that color to green. And I can add another one for tools. And I'll set that one to red. And then finally, we'll add another one for material. And I'll set that to blue. So now I have my layers in the drop down list. And just like in AutoCAD, I can easily add objects to a specific layer. So I'm going to come in with a control pick here and just select the CNC machines. You'll see now that they're on layer zero right now, but I can set them to the CNC layer. And I could do the same thing with our toolboxes. We'll put them on the tools layer and the material handling equipment. I can put that on the material layer. Very, very nice and very effective for us to actually have something uh, amazingly simple like layers in the factory layout process. Another piece of new functionality for Factory Design Suite 2014 is asset tags and descriptors. And you've already seen descriptors. Descriptors are these three-dimensional balloons that appear on top of your assets and provide descriptive information right inside of our palette. You actually add descriptors during the publishing process. Let me show you the the new asset descriptor command. You'll find it on the asset builder ribbon right here. And you're simply prompted to pick a piece of geometry and input any descriptive information you choose. Now we also have asset tags and the asset tag command is available on the factory ribbon and you can add asset tags to any assets or any other piece of inventor geometry. I started off the demonstration making a note that I had two instances of the same component. And if you've used any kind of CAD application, you know the importance of things like symbols or blocks, or in this case, assets. They're meant to be reused. And in this case, it was very easy to use the same asset and put two instances in this particular layout. But we have to appreciate and understand that these are actually unique machines and that they're going to require unique identification information. That's where the asset tag comes in. I'm going to start the asset tag command and I'm going to select a component and a piece of geometry. And then I can input any asset information I choose. And in this case, I'm going to put C1101 here. That's the brass tag number for this particular component. And then the next one will add an asset tag here. And this one's going to be C1102. Now I can add any other piece of information here I want. I can add hyperlinks to asset tags or descriptors. And the hyperlinking ability opens up a number of workflows for us with the Factory Design Suite 2014. I can link my asset to any document or internet location, or I can link my assets to PLM 360. 
PLM360 provides the ability to report on the status of equipment availability, or it provides a repository for maintenance instructions or any other machinery specific information you're tracking on each asset. So now that I've got my asset tags and my descriptors in place, I want to go ahead and save my file and then sync this to AutoCAD. Now, when I sync it to AutoCAD, the assets and or the asset tags and the asset descriptors are going to appear in the AutoCAD environment as text. So let's jump over and take a look at the AutoCAD version of my design. Let me orient this a little bit uh, clearer here so that you can see it. You can see immediately that my CNC machines are on the green layer, my tooling is on the red layer, and my material handling equipment is on the blue layer. And you also see these little white dots, which is actually the attribute information that was read from the asset tag and the descriptor. And it's very, very small, but it is annotative text. So to fix it, all I have to do is come in and use the traditional AutoCAD annotative text command, and you can see my uh, tags show up very easily or very clearly. And they are just regular AutoCAD attributes, so I can easily come in and just use the grips and modify the placement to suit. If I did want to rotate one of the attributes, you can do that very easily. You can double click it uh, for some of the asset information. You can modify it here if you choose to, or you can come into the text options and type in a new value. In this case, if I click 180, I can turn it uh, you know, 90 degrees from what it, its current position is, but I'm gonna put it back to 90 degrees for this example. So now that I've got my AutoCAD drawing ready to go, let me go ahead and save this, and let's jump back into Inventor. Back inside of Inventor, I want to update my AutoCAD drawing. And when I update my AutoCAD drawing, the asset tag and the descriptor information are going to update in the Inventor environment. And this is so nice and so handy as I'm working to actually see the descriptive information appear on the floor right beside the assets. It makes the assets easily identifiable, whether it's in 2D or 3D format. Now to finish up our presentation, I am going to turn on the visibility of my point cloud that we started with earlier, and let's put it back here into perspective view. And here I can see the overall process that we've done in about 20 minutes or so for completely uh, generating a new layout of an existing part of a facility. Now throughout our demonstration today, I've used a number of the new features that are available with the Factory Design Suite 2014. We started off with the amazing new member of the Factory Design Suite, Autodesk Recap, and we actually manipulated a point cloud and were able to just use the portion of the point cloud that was applicable for our particular design. We then moved into the application and we revealed that we now have layers inside of the factory layout and we can actually place our assets on our layers and we finished up utilizing descriptors and asset tags. Now these are just a few of the enhancements that have been made to the members of the factory design suite. In this particular demonstration we just focused on the enhancements to the factory layout process. I want to thank you for your time and attention in looking at the demonstration today.